for the session to the professor sundar rao manvi sir sir welcome to the sir once again okay 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 hello uh, welcome to second session then i will continue uh, going further as i was explaining about the uh, sterile doses form uh, packaging and uh, as i explained uh, the various technologies uh, used for a filling mechanisms the driving gravity piston and rotary pump and agar screw and here uh, you can see the picture this is one of the piston the which is the used the piston that is widely used uh, for the uh, sterile powder filling and whereas other one is the volumetric filling that are used for the liquid filling machines okay and uh, this is uh, with the piston with respect to piston there will be different pistons will be there at the at the end of the piston piston there will be some filter will be there from the filter and then the vacuum by applying the vacuum the powder will be sucked and when it come to come to the uh, what you say that the delivery stage then the vacuum will be released then powder will be filled into the container this is a simple mechanism and this is very widely used uh, in industrial application this piston uh, methods okay the piston uh, what is a mechanism since the filter materials of the piston heads passes air but not powder a compact slug means the powder will form a slug because of the vacuum when the vacuum sucks the powder powder it forms a slug the slug will be transferred into container the because the formation is slug is most important because of the transferring of delivery of the required desired amount of material into the container so this is widely employed because it will measure the accurate dose of the powder and it will deliver into the container after delivering to the container the the container will move further for capping then capping the the rubber bung then capping then sealing so this is the the continuous operation the sterile while sterile glass while will come and come to the filling station and the powder slug, slug will be formed then the slug will be transferred into the Contain container Y, then the Y will go for the uh, stoppering, aluminium capping, then for the goes for a secondary filling. This is a continuous operation. This I have shown the picture, both piston and then various uh, volumetric uh, filling machine. Okay. And then next we will we will discuss about the pre-filled series. You might have seen or you might have heard about this pre-filled series. Most of the hormones. hormones and some potent drugs where they are very potent and the desired correct doses form should be administered in this in those cases this pre filled syringes are more popular these are widely used for the administration of hormones and uh, most potent drugs and also vaccines these are very widely popular in the field of vaccines also here the medicament the measured the accurate quantity of measured medicament filled into the syringe and then directly it is used to administer so it has got the popularity because of its various advantages pre filled syringes with pre measured doses can be reduce dosing error so drawing the dose from a multi container there may be errors so it will avoid this pre filled syringe are avoid the errors in the measuring the dose and pre filled syringes can virtually reduce the the manufacturer need to overfill or unlike wise those are overfill as much as 20 30% of account of potential i know as i as i told you during filling this automatic process during filling there may be chances of error of the doses form while filling so this pre filled syringe will overcome those errors and this is particularly important for men as i told during the emergency this also used for mr for emergency because already the drug is filled in a syringe that it will administer so this is also used in the emergency cases and also pre filled syringe have a high level of accuracy which makes them them safer to use some cartridges are designed to fit into the self aspirating syringes with essentially pierce the skin 
and inject the medicaments medication without having it to push into the plunger these are the various advantages of prefilled syringes and the what is these are the components the components are the glass is used to uh, it is a non reactive and stable during the storage glass used in the manufacture of prefilled syringes should be made up of a boros because high quality borosilicate glass are used for the manufacturing of this prefilled syringes okay siliconization seems to remain one of the process required to allow the good performance in the effective delivery of the injectable prefilled syringes are one of the most challenging application where silicon is a key factor in combination with the glass barrel rubber stopper to obtain an effective and accurate drug delivery so there is a silicon okay which will which will protect and which will the, the, the uh, what do you say the use of the particular silicon is the most challenging here because it will uh, which will give the accurate dose which will help to accurate uh, fill the accurate dose of the medicament in the the barrel the syringe barrel okay glass filled syringes are two types oil silicon syringes siliconized syringes in this type the free filled syringes system there are direct contact of a rubber or rubber or to a glass surface leads to over time to higher break out force and leads to chances of contamination baked on silicon syringes in this baked on silicon syringes provides consistent coating of the glass barrel walls where uh, breaks out forces low stay low during because see, i will tell you the why the silicons are used even in the containers also there is a silicon stopper in there and the lubrication of the silicon dripper silicon uh, stopper is the most important that lubrication is done by either by oil or by using some um, uh, what do you say some silicon material some uh, solid material so use of the particular lubricant for siliconization of that particular uh, stopper silicon stopper is the most important here and plastic or polymer used in the pre -filling. other than the glass there are plastic syringes also used uh, in the pre filled syringes plastic syringe improved robustness against the breakability glass is a breakable whereas this plastic is not non is unbreakable so it has got advantages over glass so and type of plastic that are used in the pre filled syringes plastic materials are used in the prefill syringes are mainly two types cyclo olefin polymer and cyclo olefin copolymer these are the two type of polymer material which are used to manufacture the plastic prefill syringes prefilling process method of syringe filling involves online vacuum filling online vacuum filling coupled with online vacuum stoppering known as a bubble free filling it eliminates the air bubble air bubble there should not be any air bubble in the in the solution or the space which is empty space above the medicament there should not be any air bubble because if air bubble goes into the blood it will uh, it will have very severe side effect so we should avoid the we should avoid the air bubble to avoid the air bubble there is only one way is using a vacuum vacuum filling which avoids the entrapment of the air from the atmosphere so the filling process is done by the vacuum filling and then sterilization because sterilization has a to sterilization is also the most important factor as is a sterile product sterilization of the prefilled pre syringes sterilization of a prefilled syringes are mainly done by autoclaving or by ionizing if it is a glass it will be done by autoclaving If it is a plastic, it will be done by ionizing radiation, gamma sterilization. As provided, to various methods are which used for the sterilization. Now, this is all about the uh, sterile product uh, manufacturing as well as the packing. As I told you, sterile product manufacturing and filling is the one operation only. There will not be any break. In other way, if you uh, when I was discussing during the solid dosage form tablet and capsule, every unit operation there will be hold hold time will be there. But in this injectable, there will not be any hold time. Once the solution is prepared, it will be sterilized, then it will be filled and packed. This is only one single operation. There will not be any break. There will not be any hold time. 
Germany hold in the unit operation. It is a completely complete one operation. Complete one one operation is a complete automatic operation. There will not be any breakages during the various unit operation. The solution is prepared. The solution is sterilized. Then it will be filled. In other way, the containers are sterilized, come into filter, then capping, then then labeling. So this is all various unit operation in, is a continuous operation. There is no break. This is the most important in sterile process. Now we shall discuss about the aerosol. As I told you, aerosol is one of the most popular uh, doses form. And there are various uh, doses forms are there in aerosol itself. There are the different mechanism and different, uh, what is the uh, type and use. Aerosols are suspended micro particles of a liquid that vary um, in exerted distance from, from can. The particle size of the aerosol also vary in size depending on the circumstances of its outlet of the departure of the nozzle, which are usually range from 10 to 4 to 10, 10 micrometers. See the, the particle size which is coming out of from the container is depend upon the, the type of nozzles which are used for the aerosols, the uh, can. Okay. The particle size of aerosols are reasonably visible, ranging from few meters to 200 kilometer. See this, see the aerosols, the kind of, the kind and the, the pressure what we used that will impact on the flow of the particle. The particles may flow from few meters to 200 kilometers. You can imagine the kind of the pressure and the kind of container, the kind of equipment, the kind of nozzle, the kind of activator, the kind of valve, which are all used in the components of the aerosols. They are most important. The most common form of the package of aerosol households are cleaners, infectant, uh, insect replacements and medica uh, medications such as a nasal spray and nebulizers. The typical canister are packed aerosol commodities is manufactured from a raw aluminum. The most uh, popular uh, container which is used for aerosol is aluminum, aluminum container. The most common uses are of the industrial and medical purposes utilizing the emission of from a form of a vapor and spray for a beneficial purpose. So these are all the various types of uh, what is the atomizing nozzles are. We are atomizing nozzles produces the smallest drop size due to its flat cone shaped nozzles. The formation and high pressure example of air atomizer nozzles and our pressure washers and spray jets. That absorption of water, absorption water at a high speed with a significantly high pressure. This is a various step. We can see the picture, the various pattern of uh, automation, aerosols. Okay. Air automating nozzles, fine spray nozzle, halo nozzle, flat nozzle, and full cone nozzle. These are the various, the smallest particle to largest part, largest droplets. As the droplet size increases, the pattern of automation will differ. Types of aerosols. There are two types of aerosols are there. One is a two-phase, another three-phase. Two phase is a gas and liquid, three phase is a gas, liquid, and solid or liquid. These are the two types of aerosols are there. And two phases, two phase where the only gas and liquids are there. In this, the, in this two phases aerosol consist of a solution of an active ingredient in a liquid liquefied propellant and vaporized propellant. There, these are only two phases are there. One is the propellant phase, and the other one is the, the main the, the solution phase, which, which contains the medicament. The propellant, they are nothing but a carrier, which carries the medicines, which carries the medicaments. Okay. They are act as a carriers. The solvent which is composed of the propellant is for a mixture of the propellants and co-solvents, such as the alcohol, propylene glycol, propylene glycol, which are often used to enhance the solubility of the active ingredients. Okay. Then three phase. Three phase, as I told you, gas, liquid, and solid. Here, the solid particles are suspended in a media and, and as well as they'll one carrier, there's a propellant. So this is called a three phases. The three phase system consists of a suspension or emulsion. As I told you here, the drug, when, where the drug is not soluble in a media, that will be dispersed in the form of a suspension or in the form of a small globules, that is emulsion. 
So in this, in this, this is this particular system is called a three-phase system. Here, the solid particles are there; they are suspended in the media, and <clears throat> then there is a propellant, nothing but a the carrier, which carries the uh, medicament in the form of a small droplets. That is called aerosols. And a foam aerosol. There is one more kind of a aerosol. There is a foam aerosol. Is an emulsion containing molar more active in the air, surfactants, non-aqueous liquids, and the propellants. If the propellant is an internal discontinuous space, okay, a stable form is discharged. And if the propellant is the very quick breaking form is charged, see the, the, even, the very common type of this form is a shaving form. You know, you might have used shaving form. That forming shaving form is nothing but kind of aerosol. Where the surfactants are used, and here there is a discontinuous phase and continuous phase in the Okay, while shaking, the foam will be formed inside, and when you apply the pressure through the valve, the act through the valve and activator, the inside the content the, it comes in the form of a foam. So this comes one kind of a aerosol, and the various component as I told you, propellant. The propellant supplies the necessary pressure. Within an aerosol system to expel the material from the container. As I told you, the propellants are nothing but a carrier. Okay. And in combination with the other components to convert the material into desired physical form, that is the, 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 the physical form. The examples are methane, ethane, and propane, and low molecular weight hydrocarbons such as a butane, pentanes, and compressed gases such as a carbon dioxide, nitrogen, and nitrous oxide. These are all the various. Kind of a propellants which are used for the aerosols, and the other component, the valve. Valve is the most important component in the aerosol system. Here, the primary function of the valve is to regulate the flow. It will regulate the flow when you press the activate actu actuator. Then, valve will regulate the flow depending upon the pressure you applied. Based on the pressure you applied, this valve will regulate the flow. The amount, the required amount will come from through the help of the valves. Okay. And the propellant from the container, the most aerosol valves provide for a continuous spray operation and are used for the most topical products. Pharmaceutical products for oral or a nasal inhalation often utilize metered dose valves. There is a, a kind of special kind of a valves are there. They are called as a metered dose valves. Must deliver uniform quantity of spray. See, medicaments, whenever you press the activator, you should get a desired quantity of the medicament because they are, have medicinal properties. So, you should, it's not like a cosmetics, like a fragrance spray. You can, uh, there be no need to measure the quantity of the uh, quantity in the case of the fragrance or whatever the perfumes what you use in the cosmetics no need of no need to measure it but whereas if the aerosol are medicinal use then the desired amount of medicament should be entered into the system so here the valve has a most important tool because here that valve will deliver the required quantity of the medicament is there i have shown the picture the plastic and rubber and stainless steel will have the wall, wall, different kinds of walls here. I have given the explanation. And components are commonly used in meter dose walls, must deliver the accurate dose within the specified tolerance. The next part is the actuator. As I told you, actuator is fitting, the actuator is fitted into the container and attached to an aerosol wall, which is attached to the aerosol wall. Okay, system. Which when this depress, when you depress the actuator or mood, it opens the valve. Valve will be opened by the help of the actuator. Valve will be opened and it directs the spray containing the drug preparation to the desired area. Wherever you put just put the container, then press it. The actuator will help to open the valve. Then medicament will comes from the valve to the nozzle and it will dispense. The actuator usually indicates the direction. You know that whenever we apply the aerosol, we, we make the direction here, here, like that. So, 
So this indicates the direction in which the preparation is dispensed and protects the hand or a finger from the refrigerants because refrigerants are very, very what you say they are the refrigerants are in they are very cold, they are low temperature. So it will protect or hand will be protected. So the refrigerant refers the purple the propellant. These are I give the picture. In the picture, you can see the where is the valve, where is the actuator, and how the propellant. When you put the pressure, the inside the container will come outside and throw the there is a um, uh, inside the dip uh, tube. Dip tube will be there. From the dip tube, the medicament will move and it will dispense outside. In the, you can see the the various part of the uh, aerosol container. Okay, or if I insert actuator, stem, gasket, valve cap, spring cap. Spring wall housing and dip tube. These are the the various components of the aerosol. Aerosol doses. And the container. Container, you know, the normally as I told you, most of the aerosol containers are aluminium. Aerosol containers usually are made up of a glass, metal, or in a combination. These material exam pressure, you know that they will be this because aerosols are the pressurized metal doses forms. The material which are dispensed inside the container with a high pressure. So that is the reason we cannot throw with pressure aerosol bottle or aerosol container. We cannot throw because it will blast because they are the high pressurized. Even this is the reason why they are not allowed in flights also. The aerosols are not allowed in flights because they are the Pressurized joseph forms. They are inflammable because propellants, the ethane, methane, they are all inflammable because of the pressure difference. If it is explode, this is highly inflammable. So these are the main disadvantages of this aerosols. Content must be precisely engineered to give the maximum pressure. Plastics may be employed. What will give they will in the container? There is a one layer of the plastic container so that it will protect the aluminium container also. So there will be one coat will be there inside the bottle. There will be one coat inside the container. There will be coating. Okay, because of this, do do the safety characteristic. That's all. And manufacture how they are man how this is also one of the challenging. Aerosol manufacturing is also one of the challenging. Here this is also one of the continuous process only once. The medicament is made, medicament is manufactured, and it goes for a filling. There are different mechanisms are used to for the filling of this aerosol medicaments. There's a cold fill and another is a pressure fill. In cold fill, the aerosol are usually prepared. One of the two general process, the cold process process constant here, the concentrate generally cooled to a temperature below, below zero, and the refrigerated propellant are measured into the open container. The volume actuator assembly is then crimped into the content. See, you know that this gas, when they are gas, are compressed at high pressure, then it changes the form from gas to liquid. When nitrogen, all these gases, when you compress it at high pressure, the form will change. Gaseous stage to liquid state. So in this in this, the propellant are in a liquid form. And when it is entered into the container, and then it's all the components are fitted into that, all crimped, means activator, walls, and everything. When everything is closed, and when it comes to normal temperature, because of because as the propellants are compressed to high pressure, then as pressure releases, then it will change the form. From liquid to gaseous stage, it will come into gaseous stage. So this is one of the mechanism of the filling mechanism of aerosols, where the liquid propellant are minus in a low temperature, minus minus degree means they are in the liquid form. And the next other other mechanism is a pressure fill. Here, the the propellants are filled with a high pressure. So high pressure pressure fill method. The concentrate is placed in the container. Here, what will happen? The medicament or anything which is to be dispensed already it will be filled into the container. Then it will go to the pressure filling where 
the propellant means gas propellant yeah, is in the gas form only the gas propellant is filled with the high pressure okay either propellant is forced under the pressure through the valve or if i after the valve is sealed or the or the propellant is allowed to flow under the valve cap and then valve is assembly we see because once the gas is entered with the high pressure through the valve then what will happen inside the inside the pressure will develop automatically the valve will close when the pressure gets inside inside the pressure comes straight comes outside the valve will automatically close then actuator will be placed then the cap will be placed this is the second mechanism of uh, filling of aerosol okay there, these are the two types of aerosol manufacturing okay then container aerosol container usually are made up of a glass plastic or a metal or a combination of these material containers must be precisely engineered to provide the maximum pressure safety and as i told is same thing the same the same thing repeated again okay next this is this is, i have shown in the picture uh, this thing okay the filling process i have shown in the picture the cold filling and the, the vacuum uh, the high pressure filling so as i told you the first initially the placing the tube then crimping and then pressure control the and the cap placement these are the you know, the various images i want to show you how the filling process is done for aeros then we go to uh, meter doses form meter doses forms are very widely popular uh, for the uh, uh, what should say uh, uh, this is the, the most important uh, application of this meter doses forms are in uh, uh, lung for the meter doses forms are most commonly used type of inhalers mainly used in asthma and chronic obstructive pulmonary disease see whenever there is a asthma and uh, the lung diseases are there these are widely used for this meter doses forms here in the meter doses inhaler consists of a pressurized canister here one canister is there then that canister contains some medica medication okay and then uh, a mouthpiece will be there and pressuring the mdi release the medication when you pressurize the medicament will comes through the the container so using mdi the medication has a better chances to reach the smaller area see these are meant to uh, administer the drug through the oral cavity to the lungs these are a specific delivery there is specific delivery system it has got a specific delivery system where the targeted organ is lungs the medicament should reach the final organ that is alveoli when the when you activate this component the medical the medicament will travel through mouth then to the lungs so the final target this is the targeted delivery system this card is this 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 comes on a target delivery system so where the medicament is directly applied to the respiratory system that is to lung the final destination of the medicament is the alveoli it has to pass through various parts of the body what the various parts of the respiratory system see here the how it will be used the steps of use remove the cap of the inhaler over the inhaler with the mouthpiece at the bottom shake the inhaler the mixer the medical mixes properly this mixes medical not properly till your head tilt your head back around 40 degree you have to tilt the head and open your mouth wide gently breathe out first you have to breathe out then you have to press the inhaler at the same time begin a slow deep breath you take this slow deep breath the medicament will travel with various what you say the stages of the respiratory tract trachea then to the bronchial bronchioles then lungs when you take the slow breath the medicament will travel slowly to the respiratory system and it will reach the, the final destination of the that system that is the alveoli 
So the most important factor to be considered in this medical in this process form, the medicament should be very very smallest droplets because the alveoli, the alveoli, the alveoli is surrounded by the capillary blood nerves. The medicament should reach there. The the particle size of the medicament should be micronized. So it has to cross the the barrier. Just to cross through the barrier of the the capillary blood nerves. So here the most important factor to be considered is the medicament and whatever the the diluents, whatever the excipients which are used in the formulating of this dosage form should be a micronized form. Okay, and then when it reaches to the the final destination that is the alveoli, then take the and what are the composition, component composition? Propellant, here also you need a carrier. As I told you, propellants, they are used in the carrier. They carry the medicaments, okay? Propellants in MDA are liquefied compressed gases that are in the gases. As I told you, all these propellants are, they are in a gaseous stage, but when they are compressed at high pressure, the form will change from gases to liquid. So here also the propellants are in a gaseous stage, gaseous form, which are with the medicaments, and they help to carry the drug molecule, drug particle, along with the excipient to the desired destination. They are required to be non-toxic, non-flammable, compatible with the drug. That is most important. Whatever the excipient, whatever the carrier you use in the medicament, in the formulation of the medicines. You should be compatible, you should be non reactive, you should be non inflammable. The most important, you should be compatible with the You know that drug is a chemical substance which has, which is highly unstable, especially the drugs which are used for the other any really pulmonary diseases. The most of them are either they are steroids or hormones, they are highly unstable and they are highly potent. So the formulation is very challenging in these formulations. Selection of the suitable excipient, selection of the suitable propellant is a challenge in formulation of metal dose inhalers. The commonly used propellants are carbofluorocarbons, CF12, CF11 and CF11. Currently, Two hydrofluoroalkanes, that is, and uh, heptafluoroheptin are popular because then, you know that CFCs they damage the ozone layer. That is the reason. Now the advanced countries, America and all European countries, they banned the CFC, but India still they are using because India has given some exam exemption. But we need to stop using CFCs. CFC or will damage to the environment. So you should use only other than CFC like current two hydrofluoroalkanes. These are all the non-CFCs. And drug formulation. During the MDI, sir, uh, take the form of either particulate suspension solutions, suspension formed in a micronization, usually in a fluid energy. Here also, a MDI may be a solution or a suspension or maybe a powder. So here, as I told you, you should use all the micro particles. You should, you should use only the micro particles because which are intended to be used for the oral tract infection. But whereas the other systematic application where the drug will go into systematic circulation means by mouth to the by phosphorus absorbed there. The particle doesn't matter because drug will be converted into a solution, then it gets absorbed. But whereas here the drug will directly go to the absorption stage to the capillary of the alveoli where the drug will get absorbed. So here the particle size is a major rule in selection of the this dose of form. Suspension have been widely used in a, suspension are widely used uh, in this uh, MDIs because of CSCs are non-polar liquids in which mainly drug have a low solubility. And good chemical stability is achieved. So surfactant in this the suspension also they use a surfactant 
because surfactant they help the medicament to suspend in a medium so the various surfactants are used in this um, uh, mdis they are usually sorbitant trilute oleic acid or soya lecithin in concentration ranging from 0.1 to percent these are all the various surfactant various components which are used in the formulation of this mdis a difference in density between a drug particulate particles and the propellants which causes the drug particles either to rise the liquid surface or to sink under the influence of the gravity here this density are the most important okay density of the the particles and the density of the the what you say uh, uh, suspension okay uh, most of the md as a deliver only under to 200 micrograms of a drug per shot because i told you the most of the drugs which are are very potent either they are steroids hormones or any synthetic or semi synthetic drugs or uh, they are all, all highly potent drugs the drugs are in microgram microgram they are usually 100 to 200 micrograms per shot when you once you press this you want to press particular shot particular dose that is 100 micrograms up to anything the particular dose should reach the the final part of the system okay partly because of the potential problems with the valve clogging limits the quantity of the drug can be incorporated into the functioning activity function is most important if the valve doesn't function the desired amount of the drug will not reach the system and meter dose inhaler in a dry powder i have told you dry powder also very popular in this dose form the metering valve crimped into the container the most critical component of the pdi is the volume ranging from 20 my 20 25 micro microliter to 100 microliter before firing a channel between the body of the container and the metering chamber is open but as md is a while this channel closes and another channels connecting to the metering chamber of the atmosphere opens the canister is used is inverted here the canister is inverted portion you have seen the picture canister is inverted portion and when you press the the container then the desired amount will be with the pressure the pressure the desired amount will be dispensed through the valve to the system so the content the canister is used in the inverted portion with the volume below volume below in usually in other cases in other aerosol volume will be upper side here in this case the volume will be below side in the below side in the in the low, lower side okay and because of the gravity because of the <coughs> gravity the under the gravity some volumes are surrounding by the retaining cap because uh, naturally there should be some cap okay and cup uh, retaining cup that contains the next few dose for a for next dose of the drug in this action then an actuator actually the complete pmdi canister is fitted into the plastic and here the actuator is not the actually the whole container itself the outer portion you have seen the outer portion the outer portion itself is the actuator you got the point here in other cases the actuator is not a uh, complete uh, complete part of the container here the outside container itself will act as a actuator actuator it will hold the valve actuator will help the hold the valve understand you got the point hold the valve so whenever you press it actuator then through the valve the medicine will be dispensed so here the actuator can outside container itself be actually actuator the design of the actuator is important particularly because the aerosol particle size is determined by the nozzle diameter which ranges from 0.14 to 0.16 see one thing i will tell you in the metered doses forms doses form nowadays all the companies they have the patent all the multinational company glaxo is one of the biggest company they have the the wide ranges of the uh, metered doses form in india supplies the number one company and they have the patents because here the container is the most important container closure system is the most important because which will give which will dispense the desired amount of the drug so most of the mdi container closures are patented you cannot use if somebody has patented the design of the container you cannot use it 
you can make the formulation but it cannot be used because almost all container and closure system in the mds are patented technology because the whole innovation is based on the based on this uh, container system in mdi the whole innovation is based on the container system so that is almost all the mdi containers packaging systems are patented patented technology Metal doses inhaler and dry pod inhaler. Aerosol particles size are vary directly with the nozzle diameter. Four, four, five, and particle size influences the lung deposition. For one of the for one solution formulation containing the bronchodilator, phenotrol, and eprotropin. These are the bronchodilator bromine means mean lung deposition measured via gamma scintigraphy. Increases stepwise from twelve point eight. Dose to the 15.218, the actual nozzle diameter was reduced to 0.3. I mean, see, the nozzle of the diameter is again depend upon the particles of the drug again. Okay, here these are all the this bunker dilator all all potent drugs. Either they are steroids or the hormones or some of the semi-synthetic and synthetic drugs. Okay, however, the narrowest nozzle gives the greatest deposition as the narrow as the volume. Nozzle become narrow, it will give the greatest deposition because with the high pressure, the butter particles will enter into the system. Then inverter, the most important here with this dose of is <coughs> inverter characterization because this is not a this is a different doses form. It's not like other doses form. Here in this. Doses form. You should ensure that the drug particle travel through various part of the respiratory system and it deposits the targeted site that is alveolar. So, and every you should you should estimate the drug content at every stage from the mouth, the trachea, then bronchial, 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 and then bronchioles and then alveoli. Mean why? Because the size of the the size differs. The so, trachea size is different, bronchial size is different, then bronchial bronchial size size is different, then alveoli. Because so you should you should understand how much drug is depositing at various stages of the respiratory system. So to measure the drug at various stages of the respiratory system, there is a one equipment, one system, one in vitro really in vitro estimation of the drug system, the drug uh, uh, estimation. Uh, system that is called as a cascade impact in vitro characterization of a meter dose cascade impact the marple miller cascade impact model 150 160 were used to characterize the several glucocorticoids i told you students are and mdi dpi put the product at different simulated because this will simulate our the respiratory system or whole respiratory system this equipment will simulate the our respiratory system so the simulated respiratory 60 liter per minute and 90 liter per minute these are the various uh, what is the speed of the uh, flow rates following the actuation actuation one single inhaler pump the amount of drug deposited in each stage as i told you in each stage the impactor is quantified using high performance like hplc At a UV detector at not less than 242 nanometer, the size distribution of the primary particles of the DPI product was measured by laser diffraction. See, this is the. Can you see the picture? So this cascade impactor it will reflect the it will simulate the our human body or human respiratory system. As I see, there the no then secondary bronchial and terminal bronchial and alveolar. So they have they will they will different sizes are there. So there are ninety two nine to fourteen microns, five point eight nine microns, four point five. As it goes the deeper into the brain respiratory system, the size narrow downs. Size narrow downs means when you press one single dose from the MDI, the the particle the individual particle should travel through various stages and you should reach the the final stage that is the alveoli. Which is measuring 0.43 to 0.65 micrometer. See, 
this is means the particle size should be this size means below 0.45 then only it will reaches the alloy then it will goes into the blood stream then it get absorbed then it will have a, a therapeutic effect on the therapeutic efficacy okay see this is the most important uh, the uh, measurement uh, the what is the in vitro testing to understand at what stages the drug is de 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 deposited how much get is drug is deposited okay a dry powder inhaler is an asthma treatment option for the kids for older and kids and teens using a dry powder inhaler allow the medicine to get deep into the lungs unlike the inhalers which deliver the puff of a medicine these inhalers hold the medicine as a dry powder since the medicine sits inside the as a powder you have to breathe in fast and deep to get a medicine to the lungs as 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 deep as you take then the drug goes to the the final stage of the final destination of the system okay these are all about the uh, what do you say uh, mdis rather than a chemical propellant push the medicaments use the inhaler you release in medication of these inhalers by breathing in a deep fast breath there are multiple dose devices which you hold up to 200 dose and single dose devices which you fill with a capsule the one more one more uh, you know, kind of a doses form is there where you can use a single dose usually the, the multi uh, the mdi comes in a multi dose also in a single dose in single dose it comes in a capsule every time you is you take the capsule keep into the uh, component then press it when the capsule puncture then medicament will come outside this is this all this is comes under unit dose unit dose mdi a dry powder inhaler lets you breathe medicine into your lung quickly a dry powder inhaler is a breath activated this means that when you breathe in through the inhaler the inner releases the medicine into your lungs dry powder inhalers come in a different shapes and sizes for some you need to add the medicine to the inhaler each time you use it so every time you use you keep one capsule other dry powder inhalers comes with a supply of a medicine already into them but you but for this you will need to load the each dose of a medicine each time use it how you load to use depend on typical inhaler see in this yeah, as i told you this is a single unit dose single as i already i told you that multi multi dose uh, multi dose inhaler this is single unit multi dose multi uh, single unit dose here the medicament comes into the capsules a small capsule that capsule is placed in the component and there are the there are the uh, pierces there infringing uh, frange will be there there will be pins will be there okay keep the capsule close it then when you press it the capsule will puncture and take the breath then the drug which is in the powder form in the capsule come out then it will goes into the system this is the unit doses form every time you use one single capsule okay then it's all about the mdi and now uh, we shall discuss about this semi solid doses forms you know semi solid doses forms are also widely used for the external application most of the semi solid doses forms are uh, external application as semi solid doses forms either may be ointment cream gels lotion paste a different doses now and most of the uh, semi solid doses forms are or uh, either external application which is having a medicament for any uh, external infection or external uses or the cosmetics there are the two major categories one is a medicament and another cosmetics and both are doses form remain same cosmetics and the medicament either it may be form of in a ointment gel or maybe paste or maybe lotion anything so these are ointment cream lotion gels paste etc are categorized as semi solid doses forms this formulation either a oil based or aqueous based as these are emulsion based either water in oil or oil in water based okay or simple aqueous based in general ointments are general ointments are oil based and this uh, creams and lotions are aqueous based okay the paste nothing but the most most of the paste are uh, aqueous based only and they are high solid content more than 40% more than 40% of the solid contains paste 
whereas gel the solid present as very less the process of cream the process of cream or ointment making can be summarized generally as it follows powdered ingredients are dispensed into the oil or a silicone oil ingredients may be melted through heating heating can either be in the form of a jacket heating or coiled pipe heating sometimes heating can be minimized when the powdered inhaler uh, powdered in ingredients are blended through these are the various uh, process of uh, uh, making the ointments ointments and ointments usually made by the uh, using of some oily uh, oily uh, ingredients okay then incorporated by using heating process and then creams usually they are emulsion types of creams uh, then semi solid is emulsion is formed by two phase and usually when when you blend oil and water at high speed then it will form a emulsion basis and uh, you know the various problems are there in the from uh, manufacturing of uh, emulsion because the agglomeration you should be uniform because with the proper mixing and proper uh, what do you say uh, embedment of medicament and other excipients okay lumping unwanted voids stained filtered agglomerate these are the various problems which comes under uh, comes during the manufacturing of uh, semi solid dosage forms and uh, this is the various uh, the process steps all water soluble ingredients similarly oil based these are the uh, these are this I, i wanted to show you the the various uh, manufacturing process steps involved in the uh, manufacturing of uh, emulsion based uh, creams and gels okay mixing filtration and emulsification then finished product storage tank and filtering then pressing these are the various steps of uh, various manufacturing steps used in the Uh, manufacturing of semi solid dosage forms especially emulsion based creams and gels this is what uh, i was wanted to show in the picture there is a automating ointment and cream manufacturing plant i have shown the wax wax phase water phase then uh, high, high high shear mixing where the emulsion is formed then the storage vessel from storage vessel go to the filling and packing then various components are used in the form in the Uh, formation of this semi solid collapsible aluminium tubes the very widely and very low cost uh, components aluminium tubes are first choice of packaging material apart from aluminium there are plastic laminated tube plastic laminated tubes are nowadays widely used you might have seen all kinds of you know, toothpaste toothbrush toothpaste and tooth gels and all cosmetics and uh, most of the medicaments are all Uh, used the plastic because plastic laminated or they are inert non toxic so they are widely used are widely popular and secondary packing material they are cotton packing you know that the again the, the, uh, the tubes are packed in uh, secondary packing cottons okay and this is the uh, equipment which i wanted to show you the uh, fully automatic uh, way uh, the uh, empty uh, tubes are come into the uh, come here uh, convert through the convert to filling area where the desired amount will be filled then it will be crimped the the back side of the tube will be uh, pressed and sealed okay then it go for a uh, labeling and other uh, activities these are all about the uh, semi solid dosage form and these are all about uh, pharma packaging i think i covered almost all dosage forms uh, tablet capsule that is solid dosage form then liquid dosage form solution and creams and also solution and uh, suspension then i covered the sterile doses forms uh, sterile doses form uh, powder liquid as a prefit then i covered aerosol then also i covered the mdis mid dose in for uh, motor dose uh, inhalers uh, and then also i covered the semi solid i think i'm almost all uh, you know, doses forms i covered uh, so far i think i think uh, uh, most of the doses form I, i didn't cover some of the doses from that transdermal patches because this is a different area the, which has got the less application i covered almost all most popular doses forms which are uh, readily which are available in the market and which are used by the most of the population i think madhu uh, i think it's, uh, it's all about uh, this uh, um, subject some now okay sir madhu uh, yes sir yes sir i am on my sir mm, thanks sir. sir thank you so much for okay, your anyway. valuable information with uh, theoretical and uh, coordination with uh, a practical approach of that all the information and uh, overview on uh, pharmaceutical uh, packaging it is an uh, especially an integrated part of the pharmaceutical doses forms whatever the how to uh, packaging the packaging is very very important sir so uh, i um, 
i hope okay. that all the students are extracted to understanding of that uh, uh, portal in uh, both technologies in the primary secondary or tertiary packaging with uh, a comparison with the uh, solids and liquids and semi solid doses forms and in a uh, uh, industrial wide approaches because of we have the a much well known experience in the field of the pharmacy Uh, in field uh, the formulation and evolution of the various doses form sir thank you sir thank you so thank you if anybody can have some any queries they can ask they can ah, yeah, yeah. Ah, yes sir yes sir uh, dear yes, students dear students thank you for uh, uh, your patience also once again so this is a questioner over do you have any doubts regarding uh, uh, this question that is good afternoon sir good afternoon Good afternoon, sir. My name is Kalyan. Sir, I am having a small doubt. Okay, please. Sir, are there any patents regarding regarding this packaging, sir? Yes, there are a lot of patent patents out there. Patents. Yes, uh, it is very innovative, especially as I told you, the packaging uh, is one of the important components which give the protection of the drug product. There are a lot okay, of patents which is related to the components, the uh, the kind of material material used. and type of packing and type of uh, administration so there are a lot of patents are there especially as i told you meter doses inhalers almost all yes, certain what you what you see in the market there are all are patented yes sir so, sir uh, if we can change anything any component in that uh, meter dose inhaler can we apply for a new patent sir yes, like yes, uh, when a small can, change yes yes is a very very big area you can do your you can do any Uh, innovation in this there is a very see knowledge is uh, is very ocean everybody is having a uh, liberty to uh, to bring uh, their own innovation okay yes thank you sir uh, anyone students the yes, students anyone please interact with the professor uh, sir sundar raj manvi sir hello Yes, sir. Please. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Good morning. I am Anusha from the Department of Pharmaceutics, sir. I have a question. Okay. Okay. Uh, can we measure the particle concentration from the results? Yes, Or we can measure. So. Ah, there are different know? technologies are there. Very good question. Very good question you ask. There are very different technologies are there. Okay. Uh, that is already uh, scanning. Uh, scanning photography is there nowadays. High speed. Uh, uh, photographic uh, uh, scanning scanning photography instruments are there uh, when you uh, press and the the automation when the the small particles will comes out from the aerosols the picture will be taken the photo will be taken from the photo it will can measure the particles there is very advanced technologies are there you can measure the particles when when the drug protect along with the propylene um, uh, comes out from the uh, container okay. high speed cameras are there high speed cameras are there those camera they will take the picture and it will measure the individual particles and they will they will give the complete histogram complete histogram you will get how many particles are in a d10 d50 d90 ranges you know that histogram you know the micrometrics no you know D10 means yes. the 10 percent population, 50 percent population, and 90 percent population, 100 percent as population. What is the range? Okay. You'll get the complete uh, bell structure. So like, nowadays, the very advanced technologies are there. They can measure the particles of the aerosols. Okay, is a good question okay. you ask. Okay. Yes, sir. thank you, sir. Okay. Students, anyone? Do you have any doubts regarding? Uh, uh today topic please interact with uh, uh, professor sundar raj manvi sir this is a, a very good opportunity for you sir good afternoon sir good afternoon my name is santosh kumar from third b form three okay sir i have a doubt um, sir what are all the possible effects of uh, interaction between primary packaging materials and the product yes see uh, primary packaging material as i told you in uh, in some cases as i told you uh, primary packaging material they are 
either uh, a metallic metal or maybe uh, uh, what do you say the polymers polymers maybe either polyethylene or anything anything maybe but they were always high uh, what do you say um, uh, high molecular weight uh, polymer or low molecular weight uh, polymers okay in the case of uh, metals the metal will leach in the case of aluminium aluminium will leach to the product so there should be some protective layer or protective uh, component which will prevent the leaching of the material metal and also in the case of the polymers also the polymers which are used in the because almost most of the polymers the cross linked polymers either low weight or high weight um, uh, cross linked polymers they are usually inert they are not reactive but the problem is that they have a permeable the water permeability is a limitation this polymer layer no because of their pores they are there because of the pores in the pores between the uh, between the uh, what you say the links there will be chance of entrapment of the water or the cross ventilation of the water into the drug product so whatever the material we use either a polymer or a be metal you should be impermeable there should not be any cross transmission cross transmission of the either water or vapor moisture to the drug product you should protect the any whatever the material you use you should protect the drug product instead the drug product should be protected from the this primary packing material so either first thing is should be non reactive chemically should be non reactive nothing should be leached from the primary container and the second one is you should protect the from the protect the atmospheric moisture atmospheric temperature atmospheric gases these are the two main functions of the packing material primary packing material so we should select such a packing material which gives the complete protection against the any atmospheric uh, uh, atmospheric factors like uh, moisture temperature and other thing and also it should be non reactive nothing should leach from the primary packing to the drug product got you got uh, you got clarified now sir yes, sir thank you sir okay sir so so dear students anyone is ready to interact with the sir a very good afternoon sir uh, myself vishwar toni assistant professor from department of pharmacology hmm please tell sir uh, i am talking about uh, ampule sealing ampule sealing yes ampule ah uh, okay so while uh, at the time we breaking the ampule okay there is a chance of uh, filling the ampule content with uh, some glass pieces maybe a chance no actually see uh, what will happen uh, during ampule sealing no the ampule so uh, once the uh, the medicament is filled into the ampule uh, the top upper portion the top portion uh, it will uh, it will be sealed by melting by high temperature because when it's called the hermetical sealing by using some uh, inert gases Uh, and uh, it will be uh, sealed and uh, that the the part where it is sealed is is very fragile so when when doctor know when take the when, while taking the content from the vial they will break the they will break the vial where uh, the 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 position where it is very weak so whenever when they break no usually the grass will not break the grass grass pieces will not come into contact with that uh, medicament okay because of that weak area they will break it a weak area so that grass will not break into small pieces okay this is a very 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 rare um, chances that uh, broken glass will get into the uh, wine it will not it will not happen okay sir okay okay thank you sir another query is uh, this radio frequency identification is there now we are uh, paying for uh, tolls in the site of toll gate hmm so similarly can we attach the radio frequency identification while we are packing or uh, what are the obstacles what we will face in the uh, time of uh, attaching the radio frequency identification to all these things no no why it is required no doesn't you see every now for india it is not a mandatory but for any the export for any if you want to go for any export every individual like container or individual pack 
it has got a barcode it has got a barcode it can be scanned anywhere if you if you, if you scan the barcode no everything all the details will come the product name where it is manufactured you know, the date of manufacturing and the license number everything will get all every every individual container should have a barcode whether you are if you are exporting to any uh, regulated country like us or europe or any country or any other any any export market every medicam every the container every individual either a bottle or a, a carton should have a barcode that will that that is a counterfeit yeah so whoever when, when yeah okay sir from your side what you are saying is uh, maybe a from your side what you are saying is maybe a qr code or a barcode is enough in order to identify yes, the yes, already that, that is enough that is enough all uh, right That All right, sir. Enough. But There I have seen uh, uh, I have seen some of the advanced techniques where uh, in some other countries they are using RFID, uh, radio frequency uh, identification. No, that also can be applied. They are planning the same thing. Every individual vaccine ah, right, right. virus will be tracked. So for COVID vaccine, they are applying. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Okay. Yeah, thank you, sir. Okay, then fine, fine. Okay. the students or faculty members anyone else for the interacted with uh, sundar raj manvi sir regarding the to today's session that is an overview on pharmaceutical packaging an integral part of the pharmaceutical dosage forms <clears throat> sir once again to thank you sir for uh, your great uh, speaker thank you, thank you and you very much sir packaging thank you and as well as uh, already gave the that you know, criteria for the selection of the material for the pharmaceutical packaging and what are the importance of the glass as the packaging material and uh, students are able to the understanding that uh, what is the a specific criteria for the packaging of the aerosols the transdermal and medical devices comparison with the primary secondary and tertiary packaging also sir with uh, a number of the different types of the doses forms like liquids or semi solids and uh, solid doses forms sir so thank you thank you so much sir for a thank wonderful you, thank you very much thank you everyone good session for us uh, uh, everyone sir for b form c m form c and as well as the form d students are also they are uh, involving this session sir mm -hmm. and uh, uh, most thankful to the uh, my principal sir professor yeah. ramara sir and uh, thank you for giving a good opportunities such a wonderful uh, online webinars and seminars and a conference uh, through the, this uh, thank you online thank you i am also i am also in this lecture like due to the pandemic situation yeah thank sir you. Thank yes, you very exactly much. thank you very much due to the for this, this uh, session the pandemic situation yes yeah, sir Mm. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you, you very sir. Much. I'm going to the closing this session, sir. Okay. Sir, if it's possible, sir, with your permission, that the students, sir, in case there may be the contact with you, sir, with uh, whatever the yes, previous slides are showing. Email address, sir. Yes, sir. So I have given my email address. At the rate of Yahoo. Yes, sir. They can contact sir. me at any time for any technical uh, query or technical information. They can yes, uh, contact me. No problem. Sir. Okay. Anybody can contact. Okay. Okay, sir. Sure, sir. Sure. Thank you. If they are interested in any other okay, please or area, then they can ask. Students or any faculty. Okay, then. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, dear students. Please uh, uh, note down that uh, email ID is uh, Sundar Raj Manvi at the rate of Yahoo dot com. Um, please go through this mail ID. And if you have any doubts, please contact with Professor Sundar Rajmani, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, all of you. Thank you very much. Thank you.